So we're going to continue talking about fractals. Uh, one of the most important or one of the most common of which is percentiles. Um, a lot of times we measure growth uh, comparing other people by percentiles. So like, for example, um, babies, infants, those kind of things, they are put into percentiles based upon uh, projections and where they're at. So for example, uh, when my kids were uh, growing up, Brock was always in the 99th percentile for height and weight, where Bentley was more in the 50th percentile for height and 60th percentile for weight. And head size was a um, 90, 99th percentile to a huge head. Anyway, Brielle, smaller, um, she was normally a lot taller, a lot longer than other babies. Um, so she was in like the 70th percentile for length, but she was in smaller for weight because she was always a little skinny mini. So she was always in 30th percentile. She still is, right? So we break it up and we can compare it to other babies, same age, at the same time uh, as her or him or whatever. Um, so that's percentiles, right? And so we can do that. And that helps us. We also talk about that when it comes to um, test scores in different things. We talk about that in um, abilities for different things as well. All right. So let's look at an example. Uh, so example five has us interpret percentiles. So uh, this is an OGIV graph. And in this graph, remember, OGIV is a cumulative frequency, right? Starts at zero, goes up to 100 at the end. Um, it says, look at this one at the right, and it represents um, cumulative frequency distribution for SAT scores. So we take the ACT out east and some of the out west schools, they take SATs. And it says, uh, what score represents the 62nd percentile? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to find where 62 is over here on the uh, horizontal or vertical. And we go down and it looks like it hits, and maybe on my line's not very good, I'd say about 1,600. So what that means is um, anyone who scores 1,600 is in the 62nd percentile, which means that there's 62% of people who would score less than 1,600. Or we could think of it the other way, 38% would score greater than 1,600, right? So that's how we think about it. So this is the 62 percentile. So 62% of people score in that area, whereas the other 38% score in this area right here. Okay. So that would be scores that are much higher than that, right? Um, and so if you were, let's say you take it a test and you're in the uh, 80th percentile, that means that 80% of the people score less than you and 20% score more than you. Okay. Very good. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, one of the more common ways of checking uh, if something, if a, if, a, um, if a point or data is within some reasonable range. We call it a z-score. It's the most common of um, statistical scores. Uh, it's called z-score, and it, this is how we find it. So, for example, they're going to give us some number. Okay, that's going to be our data value x. And what we would do is we're going to take that X, we're going to subtract it from the average, the mean, and then we're going to divide by the standard deviation. That's why it's important that we get mean and standard deviation of all data sets, right? And so that's why it's important to find those things. And then we get something called the Z-score, okay? And so the Z-score is uh, also known as the standard score. It represents uh, the number of standard deviations uh, that it is from the average. So remember we talked about in normal distribution, right? We said, here's our average, right? And then this was like the average plus one standard deviation, um, plus two standard deviation, um, and then minus one and minus two, right? And so we said most of our data, 68% lies within one standard deviation, okay? And then we said outliers would be things that are way on the outside. And so this is actually how we test to see if something is outside of it. And so we, we take what's called the z-score, right? Okay, so let's look at an example and we'll talk about it a little bit further. So the mean speed of a vehicle along a stretch of highway is 56 miles per hour, okay? So let's take in, important information as it comes. So the average is 56 miles per hour. It says the standard deviation is four miles per hour, okay? So generally, uh, most people are going 56. Some people are, um, one standard deviation would be 50 or 60 miles an hour. One below would be 51. So I'm guessing probably um, the speed limit is probably 55, right? Some people will go five above. Some people might go a little bit below, okay? So you measure the speeds of three cars traveling. 
So we travel uh, three cars where we do check the speeds of three cars, the first of which is going 62. Okay, so I'm going to label these, and maybe you haven't seen these before. I'm going to label them as X1, which is 62. X2, my second car, is going to be 47. And X3, my last car, is 56. Okay, and so we're going to check the Z score, the standard score um, of all three of those, right? So let's take a look at the first one. Okay, I'll do the first one in orange. It goes like this. We take 62, our score, our, our speed that we find, minus the average divided by our standard deviation, right? So when we do this, uh, 62 minus 56 is 6, divided by 4 is 1.5. Okay, so our z-score of this guy is 1.5. All right, good to know. Let's find the next one. Okay, this is going to be of x2. All right, so we'll take 47 minus 56 divided by 4. And so that would be negative 9 over 4, which is negative 2.25. Okay, and then finally the last one, 56, oops, 56 minus 56 over 4. Well, that's just 0 over 4, which is 0, okay? Now, those numbers might not mean a lot to you, and that's okay. It's basically saying how many standard deviations we are away. So the first one was one and a half standard deviations away, okay? Second one was uh, two and a quarter standard deviations away, and then the last one, zero, it was the average. It was right on that. It was right on that, okay? And so we're going to want to basically, uh, basically it tells us we said 68% of our data was in within one standard deviation. So that is saying that most of our data is going to be, uh, or most of our z-scores are going to be somewhere between zero and positive one, zero and negative one. Now, we have this nice little graphic right here, and we're going to put a little star by it because this is important. Usual data, you'll see in the blue, is anything from negative two to positive two. Right? That's considered usual data. Most things are within two standard deviations. We said that. We said it's about 95% is within that in uh, general standard um, normal distribution. Once you get into two to three, we consider it unusual. So like this right here, someone going uh, 47 seems like unusual. Right, They're going too much, much slower uh, than usual. And anything that's uh, three or above, or negative three or below, meaning like negative four, negative seven, whatever, that's considered very unusual. And that would be almost considered an outlier. And most of the time that will be outliers in our data, okay? All right, so let's look at another example. All right, so this actually has to do with, um, Oscar winners, okay? So it says, in 2009, Heath Ledger won the uh, Oscar for Best Supporting Actor at the age of 29. Okay, so that's important. We're looking at his age. So we'll call it A. His age is 29. Okay. Uh, Penelope Cruz won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress, and her age was 34. So we're going to look at two different examples, right? Now, the mean average for Best Supporting Actor winners is 49.5. Okay, so this is specifically for Heath Ledger's character, or for his um, thing. So his average age is 49.5, all right, and a standard deviation of 13.8, okay? So we have our mean, we have our standard deviation, and so we can figure out our z-score. Now, for Best Supporting Actress, the average age is... 39.9, okay, and standard deviation is 14, okay? So it says find the z-scores that correspond with the ages of these two or these two people and then compare your results, okay? So we're going to do that. So let's look. I'm just going to cut it in half, and we're going to look at um, actor and actress. So actor, we'd say 29 minus 49.5 all over 13.8. All I'm doing is just plugging my numbers in. Okay, so I go to my calculator. Okay, I'm going to go to my graphing kit. Actually, I'll go to decimals. We can do it on there. So we said, uh, in parentheses, 29 
minus 49.5 divided by 13.8, okay? And so this is what we get. Just making sure our numbers are correct, right? 29 minus 49.5 over 13.8, which we have. Um, and so we get a z-score of negative 1.49. We always do two decimal places, kind of important, okay? So negative 1.49, okay? So that's that's the, the first z-score. Now let's take a look at the other one, okay? So 34 minus 39.9 all over 14, okay? So we go to our calculator, okay? All right, so we're going to do that. 34 minus 39.9 divided by 14. And that z-score is uh, a negative 0 0.42. Okay, so let's say z and z-score, right? All right, so let's talk about these. So what do you notice about them? Well, the first thing we notice is both of them are negative. So what does that mean? means that both people, when they won, they were going to be younger than the average, okay? So that's important. Next thing we notice, which one was more uh, unique or, or different? And that would be this one because um, it's getting closer to negative 2, which means it's getting closer to unusual. Now, negative 1.49 or 1.5, 1.5, whatever, is considered a usual score, considered normal. But – uh, but it's getting closer to negative two, which would, would mean that he would be significantly younger than someone winning it, okay? Uh, same with Penelope Cruz's character. Hers is negative 0 0.42, which means she's less than a half a standard deviation away from, um, from the average, which means that it's she's generally closer to the average age of other people. So you can use this information as much as you want. Now, let's say, for example, um, best supporting actor in um, using the same information, right? Uh, let's look up last year's uh, 2019 or 2020, whichever is the most recent um, best supporting actor, and we'll figure that out as well. All right. So looking uh at some information, I found out that Brad Pitt actually won in 2020, which he's he was 57 at the time, so really not that different. But one of the people that was up for it was Anthony Hopkins, who, if you remember, and maybe you don't know from any movies, but you probably recognize him. So at the time, last year, or last year when uh, nominations came out, he was 87, which is interesting because that seems a lot older. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to see what the z-score would have been if he won, okay? So 87 minus 49.5. So we're just doing a hypothetical divided by 13.8, okay? So we take that and we say 87 minus 49.5 divided by 13.8, right? We get a positive 2.72, okay? So you'll notice that that number is larger than two, which means that this would be considered unusual that an 87-year-old would win Best Supporting Actor, okay? So there's an example of something. So if it asks you, is this reasonable or not, you could give this example right here that is not reasonable, okay?